Hello everybody and welcome back to World of Warships Legends. My name is Spartan Elite 43 and tonight we are back in a ship that was an un It was an accident, okay? It was an unfortunate misclick. But we pulled it off. We were on our way making our video for the um, the buffed Nagato. If you guys remember that. And so uh, we were trying to play the Nagato. And we accidentally clicked on this thing. And of course, in, in World of Warships true fashion, like, as soon as you make a misclick, it's insta-game. Like, there's no queue time, it's just straight into a match. It, it's like the game knows that you messed up, and it's like, we gotta punish this person. How dare they? But, that being said, we're in the Ragnarok. Now, I don't know if you guys remember Ragnarok, but it is from the original... I think original. But it's from the Warhammer 40k. And, uh, it's a Nagato. So, I was like, let's just play this out, you know? You, you make mistakes occasionally, but you never know what's gonna happen. You never know what the match type... And if you look, I mean, three destroyers is not ideal, but the rest of it isn't actually that terrible of a matchmaking. And you can see, I don't even have the ship set up. I don't have my spotter plane on there or nothing. I don't even know if I have equipment on this ship, to be honest. So, like, we're out here in an unfamiliar ship in, like unfamiliar, like, un... Oh, unsolicited territory. That's the word I was going for. That's... I can think big words. You're... Are you proud of me? Mom, are you proud of me? No. Anyway, so... So, uh... We're gonna push forward on this side. Try to help our T-61 if we can. And things are not gonna go to plan. For the rest of my team. And then... We're going to just absolutely take over this lobby. It's going to be a thing. Hopefully you're ready. Because uh, Ragnarok about to live up to its name. So right off the bat, we have a New Mexico out here. And this New Mexico is going to set the stage for what's about to happen. Uh, this first shot, he's bowing. We know we overmatch because we have 410 millimeter guns because this is a Nagato. So we know we overmatch. And uh, we get four full pins straight through the bow, hitting him for 13,000 damage. And I'm like, all right. All right, Ragnarok. You feel like you're at least behaving, so can't really argue with that. And I kind of like the look of the ship. It's not the craziest look, but it is, it's kind of cool. Uh, and then the Leander comes around the corner, and I'm not going to lie. I expected this guy to disappear. But it's a light cruiser, and it's a lower tier light cruiser, and I've got big guns. Which means... No armor is the best armor, as we just proceed to overpin him for all of eternity. Now, they've already lost to Pensacola, which is great. Uh, this Leander is just sailing flat broadside to a battleship because he doesn't have to worry about anything. We're not aiming at the waterline because I want more shells to hit him. And, uh, of course, even aiming higher, our shells miss short. Because reasons. <laughs> but, uh, we take a shot again. Railguns out of the rear turret. Looks good. More overpin. Because that's what we do. We're out here just firing 16 inch or 16.1 inch shells and just overpinning all day long, doing basically no damage. But then the Colorado with his his 16 inch 45 caliber guns comes through and punches the freaking Leander right in the mouth and gets the kill. Which is great. Uh, now, rather than trying to deal with the fact that there's a destroyer out here, we're gonna turn all the way back around and head in. It's a shame we can't use that, that cannon on the front, am I right? Like, let's just look at that. Right there in the front of the dragon's mouth. That'd be fun. But, uh, anyway, we're gonna push around. We're gonna go right in and try to re-engage the rest of the enemy team. As you can see, there's New Orleans backing out of our range, so we can't do anything there. We are gonna try to push into the center of the map to take control over the, the map. But you can see there's a destroyer heading towards our cap, or at least he appears to be heading towards our cap. So, those are the things that I'm keeping an eye on. Now, obviously, when we turn away from that destroyer, he's screwed. He can't, he can't do anything. That's the best thing you can do in a battleship a lot of times in a destroyer versus a destroyer is just turn away from them and go, go the other direction. You do that, you avoid or you make it harder for them to torp you because their torpedoes can't, A, reach you a lot of times, and B, they're slower because you're going away from them. So their closing speed of their torpedoes is not as high. 
Now, New Mexico did not get the memo here about sailing broadside on, let alone reversing broadside on, in any battleship, let alone a New Mexico. Uh, this is not going to end well for him as we get a Citadel and punch him right in the mouth and getting up to basically doubling our damage in one salvo. So we've already hit that guy for, you know, a good chunk. We hit him for 13k, I think, in the first salvo, and then we just hit him for, like, 18k in that salvo. New Orleans is going to be a bit of a, a pain in my butt. But New Mexico, to his credit, fires back at our cruiser, and our cruiser just gets punched right in the kisser. Just took it right on the chin, and uh, he's lucky to still be alive. Atlanta, I, God bless you, my dude. <laughs> he's get he's getting to where he needs to be, which is behind an island, and he's hoping that somebody spots something. And I am as well. I know New Mexico's still out there. I know he's still broadside, and there he is. Finally getting spotted. Oh, and then he disappears, but then we're respotted, so then maybe he's gonna take a shot at us. He gets spotted again. He does take a shot. We're gonna aim that ahead of him, and those are rail guns. And at this point, I pretty much knew he was dead meat. But he lives. He lives. We only got the one Citadel, which was really surprising, but we did just smash that man. He's got no health left. So one more good salvo against him. He'll be gone. Uh, New Orleans, again, doing everything in his power to set me on fire. I apologize for yawning, guys. Uh, but yeah, we're going to try to lob the island here. Not guaranteed to hit him. Obviously, the game says I can't hit him. But we take those shots because you miss all of the shells you don't take. And there you go. We hit him. Now, Vesteris, as you can see, turning around, he's still charging us. Like, he's still trying to torp us. My teammates, I got a radar cruiser behind me. I got another cruiser behind me. Like, they don't care that this Vesteris is doing this. Uh, they're too busy worried about hiding. And for the Atlanta, I at least understand. Uh, we do take a shot here. We go ahead and give all the guns to the New Mexico to make sure that we don't have any issues. Uh, we go bow in. We do get the Citadel, of course, and finish him off. And then we are going to be able to put out our double fire. Anytime. There we go. Put out the double fire. And we're going to go bow in towards the rest of the enemy team. As you can see, we've got a Gneisno over here. We've got the New Orleans behind the island. We've got the Vesteras about to come out. He's still shooting at me because, again, I'm the only person that exists, right? So anytime I'm in a match, a lot of the people will literally just only shoot at me. Which should allow my teammates to do whatever they need to do. But sometimes that doesn't always work out. Uh, but Gneisno starts to push in. We've got the easy shot here, and uh, we do get a couple of hits, but not really that effective. And this Vesteras, I'm not going to lie, starting to get on my nerves. Starting to get on my nerves. So I'm looking at him now. I'm like, okay, we're going we're gonna to take a shot at this little... At this little turd. And uh, he goes to turn out. We go ahead and aim high, expecting him to turn back out towards the outside. He does turn. We take the shot, and... We get one full penetration. That's what we get. But we're up to 69,000. Nice. And Gneisno is pushing forward. Now, obviously, Gneisno has an island here to uh, protect him for the most part. Our destroyer has decided to choose death against going head-to-head -head versus an American heavy cruiser at point blank. Um, I have no idea how this is going to work out for him, but it's probably not going to end well. But I have bigger fish to fry because I have a Gneisno here. Now, obviously, I know Gneisno has torpedoes. I know what his plan is, but he has no health, and there is no chance that he gets around this corner to launch torpedoes at me before I kill him. Maybe he launches torpedoes at me before he comes around the corner, but as soon as he comes around the corner to where I can see his bow, and then he disappears with a plane in the air! You gotta love it. But uh, that allows him to come around the corner, get the torps off, but of course we know the torps are coming, right? pretty freaking obvious so we slow down we turn in as hard as we can and that's gonna make him miss his torpedoes by at least two kilometers like just completely whiffed on that and that leaves us basically broadside onto a Colorado which is not what you would call preferable but uh, Colorado appears to be about to take a wall of skill and by wall I mean a freight train of absolute pain and that's a swing and a miss by our uh, I think it was a Jervis out there but our British destroyer launching tube by tube. It's a it's a double-edged sword, man. If you can land a, a pain train from a British destroyer, it's guaranteed death strip. If you miss, even by a little bit, it makes you look like an idiot. But uh, this cruiser has chosen death. He's like, oh yeah, I got this. I'm gonna pull out in front of this Colorado. Everything will be fine. I have zero hit points. So even a secondary from the Colorado will punch me in the mouth. But that's what he's going to do. 
And to his credit, Colorado's not even looking his direction. But again, it doesn't need to. If he even gets a secondary to go off and hit that Atlanta, the Atlanta's dead. But uh, in the meantime, oh, there's the secondary. And is he going to get it? Are we going to be a fortune teller? The secondaries are firing. He just needs one shell to hit the Atlanta. One secondary shell. And the Atlanta is just getting away with it. It's pretty sad. Uh, but Atlanta goes down. Main guns from the Colorado doing what it needs to do. He does manage to uh, torp, but doesn't quite get the torps in range to hit the uh, Colorado. Colorado tactically beaching, getting out of the way of those torpedoes that he knew would be coming. We get our high caliber right there on that shot from the or on the Colorado. And uh, the New Orleans has lost all of his hit points, so he's not a threat. We're angled relatively well here. So I'm not worried about the Colorado. Uh, and his shells all fell short. Feels, feels bad, man. Been there, done that recently. So uh, we take a shot here. Should be an easy kill. Now you look at those railguns, dude. You can't ask for a better salvo than that. And we get the kill. And that is the end of the game. 103,000 damage done. I know not the highest damage game. But it's just one of those ships you don't see very often. So I thought I would show you guys a fun little misclick. And what happens when you uh, make the most of it. So uh, if you like what I'm doing. Punch the like button, leave a comment below, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and as always, I will see you in the next video.